President John F. Kennedy, 1961 to 1963. Vietnam is the place. What do we need to know? How and why Kennedy became more involved in Vietnam? Secondly, do Kennedy's policies suggest he would get America out of Vietnam? And finally, to what extent was Kennedy responsible for US involvement in Vietnam? So as we work through this, we are attempting to create our notes around this structure. The situation at the beginning of his presidency. What did he inherit from Eisenhower? What is the policy of strategic hamlets? Information regarding the Buddhist crisis, the overthrow of Diem. Situation was when Kennedy was assassinated. And finally, further foreign policy adventures, Laos and Cuba. Kennedy had long been interested in Vietnam and its preservation as a non-communist state. He believed that it was a test of American responsibility and determination in Asia. During his presidency, Kennedy had been occupied by several other crises other than Vietnam, e.g. the Soviet threat in Germany over Berlin. This meant that decisions over Vietnam were left to McNamara, his defence secretary, meaning Kennedy tended to see the Vietnam problem in terms of a military solution. Laos. Eisenhower and Kennedy met before their, his inauguration, and the main focus of their handover was on Laos. In Laos, there was a civil war between the US-backed government and the communist-led Pathet Lao, supported by the Soviet Union and North Vietnam. The belief was that if it fell to communism, if the Pathet Lao took over, it would provide a military base for the Viet Cong to attack South Vietnam, Thailand and Cambodia all linking back to the ideological struggle and its expression through domino theory. US aid had been going to Laos for some time. Again, oppressive policies introduced by the government had led many to side with the communists who were aided by the Soviet Union. Negotiated a settlement on Laos July 1962, the government of national unity would be formed and would commit to a position of neutrality in the Cold War. This would create a neutral and independent Laos. How did Cuba and Laos help lead to Vietnam? Why negotiate on Laos but not Vietnam? The US was defending an existing considerable commitment in South Vietnam, which made things different. In Laos, the investment was less and thus had greater room for manoeuvre. The failure of the Bay of Pigs in Cuba and the neutralisation of Laos there are just so many concessions that one can make to the communists in one year and survive politically. Kennedy failed at the Bay of Pigs. And critics could possibly see a cooperation with the communists in the neutralisation of Laos as another example, not of pragmatism and of successful politics, but of weakness. Vietnam was better than Laos. A long coastline meant that the US naval supremacy could be brought in to exercise influence and power in Vietnam. And Diem apparently had South Vietnam under control and democracy was established with a chance of surviving. The US were already committed to South Vietnam and if he got them out of Vietnam, extremist elements in the US would make political capital out of the retreat. Kennedy did not want to be accused of losing Vietnam in the way that previous presidents had been accused of losing North Korea and China, etc. The beginning of Kennedy's presidency. On taking office, there were 800 American military advisers in South Vietnam. Within days, Kennedy stepped up the financial aid to Diem. The fact that Diem's quarter of a million soldiers could not wipe out roughly 12,000 Viet Cong should, however, have already be ringing alarm bells, especially bearing in mind Eisenhower's pri previous um, announcement that there wasn't a military solution there. The Joint Chiefs of Staff and the National Security Council recommended putting US ground troops in. Kennedy preferred to increase the number of advisers instead, however. His Green Berets cooperated with the South Vietnamese Army, the ARVN, in counterinsurgency operations. There was the belief that the ARVN were being taught to fight the wrong kind of war, however. Kennedy feared sending in combat troops because once you send in troops, the numbers can only escalate until a victory has been achieved. The taylor Rostow report of November 1961 led to an increase in advisers, 11,000 by 1962. 
Greater US aid included the helicopters and American pilots, and the increased use of alternative weapons, napalm and defoliants to strip trees and enable better aerial observations. However, the situation continued to get worse in Vietnam as Diem was unwilling to listen to American advice on the deployment of troops. He feared losing too many men, and he used the best CIA troops to keep himself in power. Reform was an option. In May 1961, Johnson was sent to Vietnam to persuade Diem that the best way to defeat the communists was to introduce greater political, social and economic equality in South Vietnam. The Strategic Hamlet Program Working on the assumption that support for the Viet Cong was the result of intimidation, this was wrong. Peasant support for the insurgency was often willingly given due to fear and hatred of the Saigon government rather than a fear of the North Vietnamese. Diem was his own worst enemy. Early in 1962, Diem's government launched this program, which was encouraged by the US, and it was run by Diem's brother, Ngo Din Nhu. The idea was that fortified villages in which the Vietnamese peasantry was isolated from the Viet Cong. This would in turn deny the Viet Cong manpower, food and intelligence. Peasants were to be compensated for this discomfort through an array of agricultural support, e.g. seeds, fertiliser and social welfare, for example the building of schools and health centres in the hamlets. However, once inside the hamlets, they would have to pay for their new homes. US aid had instead gone to corrupted government advisers. The ARVN, however, found it difficult to protect the villages from Viet Cong infiltration. The peasantry disliked the program and didn't like being uprooted from their ancestral lands. It created more long-term problems. Debate and division in Diem's Vietnam. During 1962, there was increasing criticism of Diem's military and political ineptitude in the American press. The press were not yet questioning the wisdom of involvement in Vietnam, just the tactics pursued and the results attained. By the spring of 1963, relations between Diem and the US were very tense. Diem, it seemed, was incapable of working with anyone. Diem resented US advice. The Buddhist crisis of 1963. This was triggered by the actions of Diem's Catholic Archbishop brother, another example of nepotism. He ordered that the carrying of flags on Buddha's birthday in Hu was forbidden. Hu was an important religious city within Saigon. When the mass meeting of Buddhists refused to obey the law and refused to disperse, the deputy province, provincial chief ordered his troops to fire on the crowd. This killed nine people, including children. Rather than taking action to remedy the unrest, Diem accused the VC of causing the deaths by using grenades. Despite being shown films of the incident, Diem refused to retreat from this view. This obviously in turn leading to one of the most famous images of the 20th century, the self-immolation of a Buddhist priest in Saigon. The overthrow of Diem. August 1963, Kennedy's options. Either to continue to work with Diem or oust him. His administration were deeply divided over Diem. General Lodge believed that victory was impossible if Diem remained in power. Kennedy himself acknowledged that Diem needed to change his policies and personnel. However, he said it would be a mistake for the US to get out of Vietnam. American intelligence were aware for some time that high-ranking ARVN, unhappy at Diem's conduct of the war, Buddhist repression, were contemplating a coup against him. They wanted an assurance of American support. And on the 1st of November 1963, the ARVN generals carried out the coup. Diem and Nhu, his brother, were killed, a military revolutionary council installed instead. Kennedy's assassination. Three weeks later, Kennedy was killed himself. This left Johnson with a military force in Vietnam of 16,000. Belief that a non-communist South Vietnam was vital to the global interests of the United States. After the coup, the US assumed direct responsibility for the South Vietnamese government. The situation was, was, was worse than the one that Kennedy had inherited from Eisenhower. They assumed that the new government of General Duong Van Minh would be anti-communist and oppose the NLF and Viet Minh. They would provide a more military challenge to the insurgents and accept the US direction of the fighting. <laughs>